Hello, I'm Dylan. And I'm Keon. And this is Trust Your Doctor, that podcast where we don't look nearly as disfigured as we claim. Because this week we watched The Caves of Androzani. Written by Rob Holmes. <laughs> Rob. Good old Robbie. <laughs> D- directed by Graham Harper. And aired in March of 1984. <laughs> now, Rob Holmes. Isn't the shortened form of Robert Bob? Yeah. For, like, whatever reason? Yeah. Just how the shortened form of Richard is Dick. <laughs> for... Even less legitimate reasons. I, I actually don't know if they're legitimate reasons, but it doesn't seem to make sense to me, so. <laughs> so there you go. All <laughs> uh, right, so the Fifth Doctor's final serial. Yeah. Hard. Which interestingly comes not at the end of the season. Yeah, well, I read that that was a decision by JNT because they were going on like a bit of a hiatus, so they wanted people to like get the new Doctor before they went on this hiatus. <clears throat> Um, I guess. I mean, they could have just thrown, like, a filler cereal in there and put put this at the end. I mean, given I the know. Given the quality of most of the other cereals <laughs> of this season, would you want them to do that? Maybe. I, I mean, actually, next week's cereal is, like, not any better than most of the other cereals this week, so... <laughs> this uh, month, sorry. This week's cereal was pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was. It was pretty much, like, the only good one this season. <laughs> Except maybe last week I was like, all right. Well, I mean, it's it's Robert Holmes. I told you Robert Holmes would pull through for us. Um, Yeah, I guess. Even though everyone seems to like love this cereal and I thought it was just like pretty good. Yeah, I mean, it was like better than the vast majority of Fifth Doctor cereals, I think. Which isn't Uh, saying, which isn't saying much, uh, (laughs) to be honest, but, um, yeah, so, uh, well, I read that when JNT took over, he didn't want to, like, work with writers that had worked on the show before because he wanted to bring his own flair to the program, I guess. Wanted to bring in fresh blood. <laughs> Pretty fresh much, blood yeah. Fresh blood sacrifices. <laughs> and, um, but apparently Bidmead was, like, a really big fan of Holmes's work early on the show, like, uh, back in the fourth Doctor's era, so... He, like, really advocated for Robert Holmes to write a serial, and apparently, originally, Robert Holmes was going to write the 20th anniversary special, which would have made more sense since Robert Holmes wrote for, like, all four of those Doctors, and Terrence Dix wrote, like, one serial each tops. Um, But apparently, they didn't really like his storyline, and they went with Terrence Dix, and then they are like, well, you can write the fifth Doctor's Regeneration serial, Bob, since we've already told you you can write a serial for the show, and now we kind of feel bad, so... (laughs) And now we're contractually <laughs> obligated to let you. <laughs> um, and thank God they did, because it was pretty much, yeah, like you said, the only good serial season, so. No, Planet of Fire was debatable. but um, Planet of Fire was decent. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it starts with the Doctor and Perry landing on a desert world. Yeah, well, yeah. Does it start with them? Yeah, it does. I guess they're... Uh, they land, and then the Doctor sees some, like, glass circles, and yeah. he's like, these have been compressed by a spaceship. Yeah, well, there's all this, like, narration that's, like, dubbed over. <laughs> I, I know why that happened, too. I read up on that. Apparently, um, Graham Harper um, liked to film the scenes in uh, order, mostly, uh, but he was also, like, pretty meticulous about the scenes, so they were getting near the end of the the on set loca- uh, location filming and he realized oh shoot I'm not going to finish everything um, so they like cut- there was supposed to be a scene in the TARDIS at the beginning that would explain everything but he was like we don't have time to film that so they just cut it and put the narration in alright I mean <clears throat> not really a big deal sort of like you know six of one half dozen of the other yeah but yeah I mean Perry's accent is still kind of bad <laughs> Like, pretty bad, actually. Um, And, like, what's... The thing is, like, they don't really even make her talk like an American. Like, I wrote wrote down this one quote. I don't know what she she was responding to, but the doctor said something, and then her response is, who said they have? And I'm like, all right, if you were American, you would have said who said they did. You know? Like, it doesn't really sound... You know. You know what I'm trying to say. It's like, uh... You know, uh... Obviously, you know, but Fifty Shades, right? Like, the author's British, but she said yeah. it in Seattle for, like, absolutely no reason. And they everyone uses all these British idioms, and I don't yeah. know, they, they talk all Britishly. 
<laughs> Took off British Lee. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. There's that. Yeah. I, I, yeah, well, Perry doesn't talk that much in this serial, so... Yeah, she mostly, mostly just screams and... And falls into the, the raw... Uh, sewage, no. Um, no, that's this. It does begin with an S. S- something plex. I don't know. Shoot. Yeah, it was like the main it. plot point of the serial, too. <laughs> oh, jeez. Um, that's great. Yeah. <clears throat> um... Anyway. Spectros. Spectrox, that's what it was. Uh, well, she she talks. She she has a fair amount of lines, I guess. Until she starts dying. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, at the end. So well, they start dying like right away, but like it's but just you don't a know, slow. You don't know. You don't it's know a slow that. Process. You don't know that till episode two. <laughs> it's a slow process. <laughs> Actually, it's they it don't kinda, know that till episode two. Well, um. What's his face? Salatine is like, you'll be dead within a week. And they start dying like a couple hours later. I'm like, thanks, Salatine. <laughs> well, Salatine wanted them to die. way faster than what you said it would be. <laughs> yeah, well, Salatine... Salatine seemed like he was just messing with the Doctor and Perry because he wanted them to die, so... Salatine seemed like... He didn't, but it seemed like he had a Hitler Youth haircut because of the way he combed over the, the top part of his hair. I mean, it wasn't, but, like, I don't know. <clears throat> kind of. Not really, but, yeah. Uh, I that's mean, I guess. I, that's just the first thing I thought when, I, when we saw the real Salatine, not the weird android Salatine. Yeah, well, you also don't know it's an android till episode two. All the big reveals in episode two. <clears throat> yeah, so, anyway, the Doctor and Perry stumble into some caves... These are the caves from the title, the caves of Androzani, because they're on Androzani Minor. But then the Doctor feels that they're like not actually caves, they're like mud holes or something. Yeah, I mean, if it looks like a cave, and uh, yeah, I mean, basically, if it just looks like a cave, then yeah, it's a cave. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there. This is the 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 sort of setup, I guess, or the initial sort of setup for the 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 mud explosions. Yeah. The they doc- conveniently go off right at the end. <laughs> the doctor mentions them and Perry's all, nice change from lava. And the doctor's like, yeah, definitely. Still probably as deadly. Um, probably more deadly. Um, well, the, the, the doctor mentions at the beginning how the core of the planet is like molten mud. <laughs> and I'm, I was just like, I mean, I don't know, obviously, but like. Lava is just molten rock, so and mud yeah. is like just is 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 rock. It's just really uh, fine grains of rock, fine and wet rock. Yeah. So like, wouldn't molten mud just be also lava? I guess I don't know. <clears throat> or I mean, magma. I guess it would be magma if it's yeah. underground. Yeah, I guess it would be. But uh, molten mud sounds cool. <laughs> just like when they had that uh, the uh, ice cano. <laughs> From what the, the the original Ice Warrior cereal or I don't remember. Oh, it was, no, it was from a uh, Planet of the Daleks. Oh, or whatever right, it yeah, was. the Ice Kano. <laughs> uh, so the Doctor and Perry, the Doctor and Perry go into the caves, and then Perry, uh, Perry like falls down a hole. She falls down a a suspiciously man made looking staircase. Into raw spectros, <laughs> and the doctor touches some too, and she's like, "This is weird." It has a tingly sensation. The doctor's like, "Yeah, probably, probably nothing." <laughs> <laughs> uh, he does. He he does make some like snarky comment, just brushing it off. I'm like, "Hmm, all right." Yeah. So then some uh, some people are spying on them, and they're like, "Damn, there's some spies coming," and and then some other people show up, and they're like, "Who are you?" We're going to take you captive now. Yeah, like the military shows up or something. Whatever yeah. they were. Always getting in the way. No. <laughs> I mean, if you think about it, the military is like at least 70% of the plots of the show. Yeah, I guess. <clears throat> so they show up. They take the Doctor and Perry captive. They're, they're base thing. And they're like... And we meet Chillac. Yeah. Chillac's like... Chillax, bro. <laughs> I was thinking of shellac, 
the woodworking instrument. Um, instrument? Less of I thought an it was like a, a paste. Le- yeah, less of an instrument and more of just a, a utility item. <laughs> <coughs> the chillaxol, yeah, so uh, hostages get executed. And then we meet Morgus. Yeah, who really needs to reconsider his haircut. <laughs> I, I guess everybody in this serial needs to reconsider their haircut. I mean, Chellax was fine. The the rebel guys seem to have, you know, pretty all right <laughs> hairstyles. Nothing too out there. <clears throat> but I mean, Morgus <clears throat> and like, yeah, to a lesser extent, Salatine. Why'd they name him Salatine? Maybe like, like Saladin. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. But like, just why? Probably why did they no, name him Chellax? Pro- probably no reason, Like like everything on this show. <laughs> I feel like the names in the seal came from Robert Holmes sitting at his desk, like, looking around his room, like, gotta name him something. Hmm, Shellac. Shellac, that's a good name. Yeah, framed picture of Saladin. <laughs> He's like, hmm, just Saladin. Ha- just hanging above his writing area, just a <laughs> giant framed picture of Saladin. <clears throat> so Morgus is like, well, you better execute them, but we're not allowed to make it public, because if we do, then they'll know, and they're not allowed to know. Okay, the gun-running people. Yeah, Morgus is... A typical politician, you know, playing both sides. An intelligent sneaky, politician. Underhanded, um, not trustworthy. <laughs> what was Morgus's position, even? He was the he richest to, man on the five planets. You have all sorts you of. You missed that line? All sorts of crazy power that he shouldn't have had <laughs> otherwise. Yeah, I mean, he wasn't the president. I guess. Was he a sort of political official? I mean, I, I guess, but. Whatever. So. <laughs> Whatever. Chillac and Salatine are like, well, we're going to have to execute you. Here's yeah. how we do it. We're going to put a red cloth on you. Then we're just going to gun you down and then we'll, we'll cremate you and we'll spread your ashes according to your wishes. I'm like, hey, that's pretty nice. At least they respect their wishes for what they want done with their ashes. <clears throat> yeah, well, <laughs> it's giving them a little too much credit. Especially since we're going to just execute them offhand. And, um,. Chillac, though, actually, after discussing with Morgan, has um, doubts. Morgus. Mor- yeah, Morgus. <laughs> Watch, well, I'm going to be calling him Morgan throughout the whole thing. Well, throughout this, we get to, we see... Salatine is Ch- Chillac's second in command, by the way. We didn't mention that. Yeah. And uh, throughout all this, we see Jack. <laughs> he has a first name, but I'm still Jack. Him Jack. It's Sh- Shiraz Jack. Oh, Shiraz. Jack. Shares, or I don't know how to pronounce what? it. And he's uh, he's, he's got like a he's got like a latex suit on. That's what it looks like, at least. Yeah, and his his he has his mask on that looks the design on it looks like a stylized sort of skull thing. And like yeah. one of his eyes is only one of his eyes is uncovered. The other one's like part of the mask. Yeah, a- apparently Robert Holmes was inspired by Phantom of the Opera, which I haven't seen, so I. I don't know how much of this plot is drawn from that, but... I don't know, some creepy guy who lives underground abducting people. Most figure waiting in the shadows. Yeah, that. <laughs> and so the execution takes place. Uh, that's and how episode they, one ends, actually. Die. That's how the doctor dies. He regenerates into Colin Baker and... Uh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> <clears throat> Um, no, but it actually ends with them, like, firing the guns, and then you, you're like, okay, well, episode two is gonna start with some convoluted explanation for, like, why they don't die right now. And, and like, it's that's not, kind it's, of true, yeah. but also kind of not. It's not that convoluted, but it's still, like, okay. Basically, <clears throat> they just got switched out for androids by Shiraz. And, like, I don't know, we don't know how. I mean, not that it's really that important. I didn't really care in the end, but I was just like, hmm, Okay. Yeah, he's <clears throat> Shiraz has this weird thing where he's like fallen in love with Perry or something, and Perry's like, uh. <laughs> he's fallen in love with her beauty. Okay, was it just me, or was Shiraz like really heavily coded as gay? Hey, I, I... <clears throat> Sorry, um. Yeah, probably. I mean, if I... 
Shiraz felt like a really weird character to me because I didn't understand what his motivations in the serial were. It's because he was horribly disfigured and he wanted his revenge against Morgus. He he has more motivation than like most villains. He straight up explains what is okay. That his... part makes sense. I just was confused about uh, every single time he's he's like fawning over Perry and like this is a little weird. How does this fit into your plan? Because he also he lost his own beauty, so now yeah. he's in love with beauty. He like mentions at some point some offhanded comment like. I'll make you immortal so we can preserve your beauty. And I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, because the, the Spectrox, like, extends your life. Remember the president was, like, yeah. 100 something or whatever. But only refined or Spectrox. 80. 80. Apparently, raw Spectrox it's kills deadly. you. <laughs> so, you know, pros and cons. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, I, I guess. Um, this is actually when that's revealed. Salatine is there and like, whoa, Salatine, what are you doing here? And he's like, the other one's an android. Also, by the way, you've been here for four months. (laughs) You probably have Spectrox toxemia. And they're like, what? And he's like, first stage, tingling. Second stage, cramps. (laughs) Third stage, pain. Fourth stage, death. (laughs) In the first stage, you experience a slight pain. (laughs) And in the second stage, you keel over. <clears throat> and so the doctor's like, well... Is there a cure? And he's like, ha nope. Actually, yes. It's the bat... <laughs> it's the bat milk. The queen bat milk. He straight milk. up does that. He First he's like, there's no cure. And then like, three seconds later, he's like, by the way, guys, there's a cure. It's bat milk. And the doctor's like, all right, wait, can we get this bat milk? And he's like, ha ha! Bat nipples. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I must have missed that Batman movie. <laughs> Bat nipples and Robin. <laughs> <laughs> so he's like, "Oh, in the lower levels." Um, you know, I thought that we were gonna, because because they're like monster bats or they're like giant bats or something. So I thought they were gonna like fight or encounter. A monster bat, but I guess they didn't. No, it was like sleeping or something. I just walked up and took it. And Salatine makes this big deal about there being a monster down, down there. And uh, yeah, the monster just dies off <laughs> screen, like, like between now and when the doctor gets down there. It's, it's the dragon guy, though. There, there's more than it's one. It's the Merca. <laughs> <clears throat> Actually, come to think of it, that dragon monster thing kind of reminded me of the Draconians or whatever. Whoever they were. Yeah. Um, also from Planet of the Daleks, or like the serial before that, Frontier in Space, I think it was. Was that even called Planet of the Daleks? The one with the yeah, purple... It was. Yeah, it oh, Okay. Yeah, no. It, it's a pretty safe bet that if it's a Dalek serial, it's called Something of the Daleks. So. Yeah, but I don't know if it was Planet, or like, maybe it was something else. I don't know. Yeah, it was Planet. Because Destiny of the Daleks was the one in the house. <laughs> and the time travel nonsense. <laughs> Anyway, so, yeah. So the the there's an android guarding the door, and Shiraz has programmed all the androids to kill humans on site. And the only way that they won't kill humans is if they're wearing a certain belt, which gives off like some kind of frequency that tells them not to kill the humans. And the doctor's like, "Luckily, I'm not human." Yeah, nice to see that come into play for once. <laughs> <It's>, well, <clears throat> I guess yeah. Um. So he just wanders out, and the android doesn't shoot him, and he's like, well, I guess I'm going to disable you. Disable. <clears throat> yep, so he, Salatine, and Perry um, all Fallen. go, yeah, they they all go down to the lower levels. And Shiraz has this, like, diagram of the mines, and it looks like some sort of rainbow ant farm. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, it, it's also interesting because Chillac... I think uses the same map for reference because later on he's like, "We don't control the yellow zone," <laughs> and then um, Salatine's like, "Doesn't matter." <clears throat> um, yeah, so basically the the military wants Jack because he's they think he's helping the gun runners, which he is because he's selling his spec trucks to the gun runners in exchange for guns because Jack wants to kill Morgus. Yeah, he's like raising an army underground for who knows how many years <clears throat> um yeah and i guess he plans to keep doing it till he's gotten big enough army to kill morgus and then um 
I don't know what he's going to do after that. Slice mission will be complete. <clears throat> yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what his plans are afterwards. Maybe just kick Probably back. just kill himself. Oh, I was going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> like, kick back with the martini. <laughs> uh, you were thinking something completely different. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Yeah, and then it's also revealed later that Morgus is actually covertly helping the gun runners. So Morgus is actually helping the yeah, gun runners, both sides. like bring bring down himself, I guess. Um. Anyway. Well, yeah, we also meet the president at one point. Well, briefly, because the second, yeah, he shows up to watch the execution, and then he comes back later and gets brutally murdered. So. Yeah, well... <laughs> so it was actually kind of violent, to be honest. Yeah, it was. <laughs> and there were those realistic... Guns. Guns, yeah. That was apparently a decision by Graham Harper, too. So <laughs> he was like, gotta have it look realistic. Gotta get real guns. Um, so... If you can dodge a bullet, then you can... Do- okay, never mind. <laughs> the Matrix. No, you, you, you've seen Dodgeball, right? Oh, yeah, no. Dodgeball. <laughs> Not The Matrix. <laughs> Dodgeball was a good movie. <clears throat> um. Uh, so yeah, then uh, Salatine betrays the doctor. Not that he was ever really on his side. Yeah. Well, he takes so, Perry and runs away. Yeah, they encounter who do they do they encounter the dragon thing. Like what? What? No, they encounter no the, the like. That? Um, they encounter the, an android or the something. The gun runners are coming down, aren't they? Because the gun runners are going to meet with Jack because they like failed the gun delivery because the doctor and Perry were caught with it, so they couldn't deliver the guns to Jack. So they're going to go meet with Jack to like negotiate. Okay, so what the heck was that scene with them pushing all of the weapons off like a little cliff? Like, what was that for? They, were they just? I don't know. Like, I didn't get. Got to dispose of the evidence. But I didn't get why they needed to do that. Couldn't they have just brought the weapons to Jack and got the the Spectrox? I guess. I don't know. Because I thought the weapons, the, like, weapons Jack wanted were the ones that the Doctor and Perry got caught with, which is why they thought Perry and the Doctor were, like, gun runners. Yeah. <clears throat> but, like, they seem, they seem to have, like, <laughs> More weapons, weapons that they just decided to destroy. So, I hey, don't I, I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> And then the, the gun runners come down, and Salatine's like, shoot, gotta hide. So he takes Perry, like, runs away, and then the, the magma monster comes lumbering in. <laughs> it's like, what's up, dudes? And episode two ends with it getting dangerously close to the doctor's hiding place. <gasps> no. And then episode three begins with him just deciding to turn around and walk <laughs> walk away, I, I guess. He's getting shot. And the gunrunner's like, haha, we captured you, Doctor. And he's like, yeah, yeah, I guess you have. Yeah, the magma beasts were the most innocent ones in this serial. They didn't deserve all of this. They're just living in their natural habitat, trying to live in peace, you know, maybe kill some prey every once in a while. <laughs> okay, I actually don't know about that, but... <laughs> yeah, what do the magma beasts feed on? I guess they feed on the bats. It's like a whole ecosystem say, down there. I was going to say all the people that seem to die in these caverns. <laughs> but yeah, probably the bats. <laughs> but yeah, let's go with that. The bats. Yeah. What do the bats feed on? Spectrox. <laughs> That's why their milk is the antidote. It all makes sense now. They created a whole living, breathing ecosystem for this cereal that gets blown to smithereens in the end. <laughs> uh, so... The doctor gets taken with, uh, shoot, what's the head red gun runner's name? Yeah, I never knew his name. It's, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Me neither. Did we already get that <clears throat> scene where he, like, almost kills one of his men? Yeah, we have. He almost kills Kelper. Yeah, because, uh, okay, Kelper, I didn't know his name until now. But Kelper yeah, was, Kelper. like, the second in command. Yeah, Kelper's like, I want out, or something like that. <laughs> More Robert Holmes looking around his room for names. Hey, Kelp! Kelper! <laughs> Just a pile of kelp on his carpet. His wife's like, can you clean this up, Bob? <laughs> it's been there for weeks! <laughs> it's my inspiration! <laughs> um, yeah, Kelper wants out, and uh, the head 
guy is like, so you want out, huh? And he almost pushes him off a cliff and almost cuts his head off and almost gives him this little poison capsule. He gives him the capsule and it's like, eat it. And then he eats it and he's like, next time it won't be a fake. No, because I thought he was like, next time I'll do it for real. And he doesn't make him swallow it. And the, like at the very end, right before the cut, he spits it out. Okay, I didn't see him spit it out. So I assumed he had like eaten it and was just like a non-cyanide <laughs> pill. It was like, <laughs> it was like a sugar pill or something. <clears throat> um, but yeah, the gun runners have the doctor and like, we're going to take you to Morgus uh, this is when it's revealed they they like they're working with Morgus, so they're gonna take him to Andrazani Major, which is basically where everyone who's smart lives. Um, it's, it's it's the the colonized planet because I think the doctor says something about this in the beginning. Like this miner wasn't suitable for colonization, so they just colonized Major instead, and they just yeah. set up like this mining operation on Miner. Mining operation on Miner. <laughs> This is kind of like the, it's kind of like Arakis from Dune. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. With the, I don't remember what the the stuff was called in Dune. The, the spice. Yeah, it was the spice. It had its own name, but. Yeah. I mean, yeah, but it was spice. <laughs> he who controls the spice controls the world. <clears throat> Except this wasn't as drawn out and boring at times as Dune. It was actually pretty interesting, so. Yeah, so they take the doctor to, to Major, and then uh, Morgus no, is... No, what, they take him to Major? Yeah, they do. Well, they, like, start taking him to Major, because there's that yeah, whole they, scene where he crashes the ship back start, into Minor. They start taking him to Major, they get him on their ship, but then they don't <clears throat> The take plan him is to take way. him to Major. Okay, so, actually, before this, they encountered Shiraz, and they were like, Hey, Shiraz, we don't have your weapons, but we want your uh, Spectrox anyway. And Shiraz is like, ha ha, no. And the, the guys are like, well, I guess we're not giving you any more weapons then. Let's let's leave, boys. Actually, they all were actually guys. <clears throat> yeah, the wiki actually points yeah, well, out that the no only... female characters in this serial except Perry and Timonette or yeah. whatever her name is. No, was. the wiki points out that the only people who survived the serial are the two female characters, so... <laughs> <clears throat> um, yeah, so... T- whatever her name was, T- Timet, Timonet, Timonan, Timon, Tigger, know. no, um, Tigger. whatever her name, she was Morgus's Timon. like <laughs> Timon. Uh, she was like Morgus's secretary, I think. Yeah, and, and she becomes like a major player later. Yeah, I mean in she... Morgus's life. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, she deposes him. Yeah, spoilers. Uh, Okay, so yeah, when when the gun runners meet with Shiraz, this is when they learn that the his store of Spectrox is like within ten minutes walking distance of like the rendezvous point yeah, or something. Jazz is like, I'll be back in twenty minutes. So the guy's like, Okay, so the store is within ten minutes then, because ten minutes there, ten minutes back. <clears throat> Maybe it's within one minute and he's like, I'll be back within twenty. Yeah, He's no, like, I be. needed this break. That that that's what the guy's saying. Yeah. It's within yeah. a within a ten minute journey. Yeah, it's so. within ten minutes. <clears throat> Maybe it's like literally could be like, right yeah, over could the be left. Like, yeah, I was gonna say it could be just around the corner. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, they they have the doctor on their ship and they like they lock him up, but he gets out. He displays like this superhuman strength. So I was like, you know, this is actually keeping in line with previous regenerations where their doctor develops super strength right before he regenerates. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <clears throat> well, I mean, Tom Baker does hold on to that satellite dish for a pretty long time. <laughs> okay, so maybe I, I was on to something after all. Um, but no, he, he like rips out of his handcuffs or something. No, oh, no. What happens is um, he like rips a panel off the wall while his hands are still handcuffed and he reveals like this plasma beam and he burns the handcuff <laughs> yeah, handcuffs yeah. off. Yeah, he, he reveals that little <clears throat> beam thing where I'm like, it's still pretty impressive that he ripped that thing off the wall. Well, he's desperate. <clears throat> he, 
he has not he actually has nothing to lose right now because he's already dying so if they just shot him it like wouldn't matter so yeah and that's what that's his point when he like hijacks the ship which is pretty much right now but i think it was also after morgus kills the president so basically the president comes back into morgus's office and um you shoved like, down an elevator yeah shoved. yeah <laughs> 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 and then T- Tim Timone. <laughs> yeah. Um yeah, we're uh <clears throat> Timon. Timon comes back in and Morgus just like super inconspicuous here he's like, "Hey Timon, the president died and I'm also heartbroken and also I didn't push him down that shaft. Also, I'm execute- not a robot. <laughs> <laughs> also, make sure you have the elevator Guy. Guy executed. And she's like, will do, sir. Will do. She leaves. And you're like, wow, she's in on his plans. And she not, is, but I like mean, not in not, the way you yeah. think. <laughs> yeah, so now the thought, well, meanwhile, down underground, um... Uh, Salatine's like, hey, so I know where the base is. Let's go attack. Because he gets back to Shellac yeah, he, and he's like, you've had a, you've had a Shellac, and he's like, you've had a robot duplicate for the past four months. And Shellac's like, oh shoot, I was wondering why he was acting so weird. <laughs> and meanwhile, Perry's dying, so they kind of still, just, uh, yeah, <laughs> they kind of just let her rest or something, and they devise this plan to confuse Shiraz by feeding him misinformation through the through robot because Salatine, yeah. yeah because of the android Salatine was like letting Shiraz know about all of Chelak and the military's plans yeah so first Chelak is like well we're just going to have to dispose of the android and then Salatine comes up with the brilliant plan to feed them all this false information yeah, well, it does. They don't fall for it. The, the, the sec, the next scene with Shiraz is him being like, "They're trying to deceive me, but I won't fall for it." Well, also, the Salatine android comes in and sees through the wall and sees Salatine and Perry like in the other room. So he looks like, "Well, I guess I'm being <laughs> deceived right now." And then <laughs> I don't even know why they tried this plan because Chalak like comes into the room and Salatine's like, "Oh yeah, androids can see people through walls," and Chalak's like, "What the heck?" <laughs> what the heck, Salatine? You're you useless. Have, you could have mentioned this before, Salatine. <laughs> but they decide to go through with the attack on uh, Shiraz's base anyway. But that, that happens yeah. in episode four, so. So, oh, I forgot to mention, the gunrunner dudes were, like, interrogating the doctor. And they, like, they contact Morgus, too. So that happens. And then the the... They ask the doctor to tell them the truth about what's really going on. He's like, I have been telling the truth this entire time and no one believes me. And I'm like, yep, see, this is why I always lie. <laughs> right. Yep. <clears throat> what What if no one believes you when you're lying, though? Yeah, it happens a lot of the time. I, I feel like it would happen most of the time. No, not really. I feel like, uh, I feel like most Actually, people no. just don't believe whatever you say, regardless if it's truth or lies. <clears throat> no, actually, I think people believe the lies more a lot more a lot more than the truth. Because I mean, if you didn't know, like ninety nine percent of what I say is a lie or a joke. Right. <laughs> well, hey, I'm usually never n- not joking or not lying. So, yeah, there mm, you go. Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> um. um. Yeah, so then the doctor hijacks the ship, and they're like, Doctor, back away from the controls, and we won't shoot you. And the doctor's... He, he gives this, like, nice little brief speech, and the, the brevity was part of why it was nice. <clears throat> yeah. So this is one of the best Fifth Doctor quotes, I guess. Yeah, he basically... Not that I was keeping quotes basically... from the Fifth Doctor. <laughs> yeah, I for was. Once, for once. What a, what a, a flip from the Fourth Doctor. Yeah. reversal of fates. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um... Yeah, the doctor says something like, oh, I owe it to Perry because I got her into this mess and I'm going to save her and get her out of this mess. And also, I don't have anything to lose, so you can see why I'm not going to let you stop me because I'm already dying. Yeah, he's like, I'm not going to let you stop me now. So <laughs> That's how episode three ends. I actually like this cliffhanger. 
It's <clears> way <throat> better than the usual doctor's gonna die, companion's gonna die. I mean, the doctor hanger. is gonna die, yeah, yeah, except this like time you know own, he's gonna die. But it's by his own hand, so it's like, better than how's he gonna escape now? I mean, it's still how's he gonna escape now, but it's like, why is he gonna not kill himself now? Well, <clears throat> I guess... Uh, this may not have been intentional, but part of the good thing about not having regenerate, like at the end of the season, was that you wouldn't know it's coming because you would. I guess because yeah. you would pretty much always assume the doctor would regenerate at the end of the season. So I guess you would assume that the doctor's going to find the milk and like him and Perry are going to be fine. But then at the end of the series, you're like, whoa, what's happening? And the doctor's dead. So, <clears throat> whoa, man. But anyway, yeah. Episode four begins with the ship crash landing, and the doctor's like, well. I'm all fine and dandy. Let's go. <laughs> and he spends two minutes running away from the gun runners who are the worst shots in the history of Doctor Who. <laughs> I think there's some, probably some characters who are their equal. They're pretty bad, but there's some characters who are their equal. I don't know about the doctor's running across a featureless desert and they've got like semi-automatic guns and they've missed, they miss every single shot. I don't know. I mean, I can't think of any examples, but I feel like there's been someone who's either been worse or, like, probably around just as bad. But yeah, they're pretty bad. I mean, but hey, it's not their job to use the guns. It's just their job to smuggle them. I feel like their job is to use the guns. They're supposed to be protecting the shipment. Yeah, they'd probably need to use the guns, but, like, it's not guaranteed that they would. Maybe everything would just go according to plan. Well, yeah, but what if the plan is kill these dudes? (laughs) Well, they were just smugglers. Also murderers. Yes. So. But they have knives. <laughs> and poison pills. Yeah, they like to bring knives to a gunfight. Get... Bring poison pills to a gunfight. <laughs> throw guess... them at your enemy. <laughs> Can you eat these, please? <laughs> um, I guess the, the poison capsule was raw Spectrox. That would suck. <laughs> Just it t- apparently takes like a week to kill you, according to Salatine. Although he was probably lying, because the doctor starts dying about two hours after <laughs> Salatine yeah. tells him that. <clears throat> so yeah, the doctor goes into the caves and finds out that the military is currently battling Shiraz's androids, and Salatine. <laughs> They think they're fine because they, like, duplicated the safety belts, but Shiraz changes the frequency, so Salatine's like, they won't shoot us, and then he just gets gunned down. Yep. (laughs) Okay, apparently his android comes back later. I thought it was him. I thought he survived, and he comes back later. No, pretty sure he's dead. Especially since, like, Chillac runs in and checks Salatine's pulse and is like, nope, and then, like, runs on ahead. Maybe he died for a couple minutes. That happens. I don't, I don't think it does. Yeah, people like people like die for several minutes. And I mean, yeah, back. but they do that in a hospital, not like in the middle of a hey, cave. You never know. Where there's no me- there's no medical support. You never know. There's mud <laughs> explosions <laughs> happening everywhere. You never know. <laughs> Probably got blown up by a mud explosion. You never know. <laughs> Limbs went flying everywhere. You never know. His head just rolls down the cave. <laughs> Pretty gruesome, but hey, you never know. <laughs> His head just rolls in in the final scene. He's still alive, though. He's like, hey, guys, what did I miss? Um, <laughs> but yeah, they're going to have this like final showdown between Shiraz's androids and the military. Meanwhile, Timon <laughs> has oh, become well, the best character in the serial. Well, before that happens, like just before that happens, Morgus leaves Androzani Major because he thinks someone oh, yeah. else knows about yeah. him helping the gunrunners. Yeah, he he's... Also wants like a large share of the spoils, so he's he and whatever the leader's name was, we're gonna team up with each other and kill the other two guys. Which they do. Yeah, he, he, they do. Well, leader guy does. Yeah, and Timon reveals that she's deposed Morgus. She's taken all of his funds and frozen them. Also, he's wanted for seventeen counts, one of which includes the murder of the president. And he's just like, ha ha, good one, Timon. And she's like, yeah, I'm not kidding, bye. <laughs> Morgus is like, ah, oh, sh- shoot. <laughs> so he, he basically makes a last ditch effort to go get the Spectrox. Yeah, and he mentions how he has, like, safe holds 
on a bunch of surrounding planets, and Timmons like, by the way, I notified all the surrounding planets of all of this. Ah, <laughs> oh, <laughs> heck. Oh, shit. No. <sighs> so they head into the caves, and uh, Chillac makes it to Shiraz's, Sh- Shiraz's base. They, like, battle it out for a bit, and then Shiraz chucks Chellac out of the room and locks it, and then he gets, like, destroyed by the mud burst. Okay, so, so Shiraz, through all of this, has, one, been creeping around Perry, and two, <laughs> been making mention about how he was horribly disfigured when he decided to team up with Morgus and do something illegal, and it, Morgus betrayed him and left him horribly disfigured. So that's why he wears this mask. And I'm like, wow, and the he latex must, suit, I guess. He, he must look really bad. I mean, he probably looks worse than the crispy master, and <laughs> probably worse than 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 you know anyone we've really seen so far. And and you know his his whole attitude is like, just uh, Morbius based, yeah, just based around his horribly disfigured face and at the end you know some characters see his face without you seeing his face and they like scream as if it's the worst thing they've ever seen and it'll give them nightmares for the rest of their lives and then you see his face at the end and I was like that's really not that bad I mean I can still understand why he harbors this enormous grudge against Morgus for you know one betraying him and two horribly disfiguring him because yeah he is horribly disfigured but like it doesn't really look that bad He's, like, kind of over-exaggerating it. Well, I feel like he's been looking in the mirror every day for, like, years and years, so in his mind it got worse. Maybe. <clears throat> like, to him, it looks worse than it is, but, It's yeah. still pretty bad, though. Like, if that happened to you, you'd be yeah. like, oh, shoot. Yeah, uh, um, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> but then at least you get to wear a sick skull mask. You can do that without having a horribly disfigured face. Yeah, but, like, you don't really have a great reason to. Why not? It's a sick skull mask. You don't need a reason to wear that. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, now... Okay, so, the do- well, the doctor makes it to Shiraz, and Shiraz is like, take this oxygen tank, go get some milk. And he's like, yeah, I'm gonna try. Hopefully I don't die on the way there. And then he leaves, and Shiraz is supposed to be keeping Perry's body temperature down, but then Morgus and his gunrunner buddy bust in, and they start fighting, and then the mud beast come or magma beast shows up, and then there's like a giant battle, and some people die. Yeah, I didn't know what was going on. Uh, I didn't know if the magma beast was in the caverns and part of the skirmish or was in Shiraz's lab. Well, he or, died. I don't know. The magma beast. Yeah, died. the magma beast died. Doctor Poor runs, magma beast. <laughs> Doctor runs past his corpse and is like, oh. Then he keeps going. Gets the milk from the sleeping bat. Gets back out. Yeah, we didn't really see the bat. Or, like, I didn't notice... Or I didn't really get a good glimpse of it. Well, it's a pretty dark scene, so... Yeah, the so bat I, is I guess there. there was just an excuse for, like, a really terrible bat prop, probably. So they're like, we'll just obscure it a lot. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, yeah, he gets Morgus the has the most gruesome death in this hero because he gets shoved into, like, some sort of clear vacuum tube thing. And then he screams as his face gets I don't know, disintegrated or something. Is that bright? So, okay, is his face bright gets lights? Disintegr- yeah, I guess he gets his just desserts then. <laughs> and then um, Shiraz dies also. Yeah. Apparently, this is when I thought the real Salatine showed back up, but apparently it was just his android shows back up and also dies. Yeah. And then all the mud explosions that we've been <laughs> hearing <mud> about. <laughs> Yeah, the, the the mud... What were they actually called? The mud... I don't know. I think they were just called mud explosions. Yeah. No, I don't know. Anyway, those things that we've been hearing about the entire time start <clears throat> conveniently. Well, they've been going on already because Chalak dies to one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess they start like kind of right at the end when they're about to have this like screaming final through the door. battle. He's like, Shiraz! No, Shiraz! And then he dies. So that was, that was also pretty gruesome. Uh, and then the doctor like lifts Perry and carries her all the way back to the TARDIS and then sets it to take off. And then I noticed this when the TARDIS takes off, the like horizon line shifts with the TARDIS taking off. So like kind of failed at making what? the TARDIS effect there. No, because normally the TARDIS would just disappear. So if you like watch that scene, the TARDIS and like the upper thin line of the horizon layer also disappears. Because I guess when they filmed the shot without the TARDIS in it, they accidentally moved the camera. <clears throat> so when they fade between them, like a chunk of the horizon just disappears. Mm, I didn't notice it. Um, 
But yeah, Perry's dying. The doctor's dying. And the doctor and gives they, the milk have to the Perry. Milk, so it's all okay. And he gives the milk to Perry, and, and she recovers, and then she's like, have some milk, doctor. And he's like, not enough. I didn't get enough milk. I'm going to die now. <laughs> it's like, there was only enough for you. <clears throat> and then he... Well, I mean, do the, the bats don't live in 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 uh, schools? Well, There's they probably do. a murder of bats? They probably do, but Shiraz said it's only the milk of the queen bat that... Mm, wow. That cures the... Convenient. Yeah. <laughs> so... No, that's... that's Yeah, okay. Whatever. <clears throat> the queen... Is that like the queen ant? It's like, why is the there a queen, queen bee? bat? <clears throat> now that I think about it, there are like a, a, a decent amount of insect species with queen somethings. Queen yeah. ants, queen bees. Yeah. <clears throat> That's like their their thing. Their modus operandi. Yeah, that's like their one thing that they have <laughs> that no one else has. <laughs> you know that the, the ant may be small and and weak, but you know you. I look don't at, think the ant is oh, weak. It's not that weak. You look, <laughs> you look at a tiger. You look at a lion. You look at the great beasts of the ocean, the whales, the sharks. <laughs> okay, you look you at did, the majestic eagles. Before you said whales and sharks, I thought you were like implying that the lions and, and tigers were the great beasts of the ocean. I was like, are you high? <laughs> <clears throat> you look at all these majestic creatures in nature, and you're like, those guys are pretty cool, but they don't have a queen. They don't have a queen. The ant has a queen. If I, I mean... The bee has a queen. Do whales really need queen? The whales are pretty no, cool. No, mammals don't own. need queens. That's yeah. like their whole thing. They don't have queens. That's why you look at ants and you're like, they have a queen. But then you look at mammals and they're like, they don't need a queen. I mean, do humans need a queen? I mean, well, you know, there's, okay. um, maybe. It's debatable. <laughs> queen Victoria. Queen Elizabeth. <clears throat> Any Okay, anyway. Enough of queen talk. <laughs> Do yeah. we, did we really need Freddie Mercury? I'm just kidding. Yes. <laughs> Queen's like my favorite band. <clears throat> eh. Queen's overrated. That's like True. your opinion, man. <laughs> <clears throat> it's because no one listens to the, the, the songs that aren't super mainstream. <clears throat> That's not like a hipster thing. That's just like a fact. Mm. Most people just li- most people just mm. listen to Bohemian Rhapsody and are like, that's it. But well, what Queen about that one where it's songs. like the the laser beam? Ah, I ki- don't know. Killer Queen. <laughs> also a good song. Oh, yeah. It's, uh, that's interesting. Killer Queen <laughs> by Queen. I remember there being a, a silly story about why they're called Queen, but I don't remember it right now. So anyway, enough of that. <laughs> the doctor regenerates and he sees visions of all his former companions that were yeah. specially recorded for this serial. Yeah, we got Tegan, we got Nissa, we have Chameleon! <laughs> we have Turlo. And we have Ad- Adric, he just won't leave us alone. He just won't die. Yeah, and the fifth doctor's final word is Adric? <laughs> Damn it, Adric! <laughs> Man, <sighs> all the other doctors have these, well, except the second doctor, all these cool final words. Third Doctor's all, wow, there's life, there's... And then he dies. And the Fourth Doctor's all, I don't remember the what the moment's fourth. been prepared yeah. for. And the Fifth Doctor's all, Adric? Adric? <laughs> <laughs> um, and the Master yeah. shows up, and he's oh, like, yeah. die! All his companions are like, don't die yet, Doctor. And the Master's like, die! Um, apparently there's an audio drama that, like, reveals that the Master uses his psychic link with Comedian, <laughs> who had a psychic link with the Doctor, to try and force the Doctor to die permanently. And all his companions were like... Sending them mental... I don't know. Sending right. them mental well, energy to yeah. help the doctor or we something. We really need that little piece of information there. It was fine as it is, but hey, whatever. And then there's this really trippy regeneration effect. The screen goes all uh, wavy. Yeah. It, um, it reminded me of something, um, but I don't exactly remember what. I don't think it was from Doctor Who. It reminded me of that uh, picture of Mars that's like kind of blue because it's not a visual light picture, but it reminded me of that picture. <clears throat> okay. It's like one of the iPhone default wallpapers. Uh, um, all right. If you say so, it looked just like wavy sort of lines to me, but hey, whatever. Um, and then the doctor regenerates and it's Maxel. Yeah. <laughs> it's Colin Baker. I remember you. So Maxwell's the new doctor, huh? That's going to be interesting. Yep. Yep. No, it's it's actually just Colin Baker. 
playing himself now. Probably. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> probably does the probably gonna do the Tom Baker thing and he says what I've heard, so <laughs> Well, uh, yeah, he has a couple, you know, some sort of brief lines at the end of this. And I was like, so this is what it's going to be for the next couple of seasons. Okay, huh? well, I'm going to set you up now for disappointment. Their plan was they were going to have this character arc for the sixth Doctor where he's going to like start out as kind of like an arrogant jerk. And, yeah, I, I think I know about this already. And they were going to like develop into a softer character at the end. But like they couldn't reach an agreement with Colin Baker's contract <laughs> so that they just like killed him off and regenerated <laughs> yeah, without I, like I complete knew. without completing no. the character arc. Yeah, I already knew about that. So he was going to be sort of like a, a third doctor type character except intentional this time, but then that just didn't happen. Well, I mean, like I said, I've seen next week's serial and uh yeah, don't know if we're going to don't know if we're going to like the sixth doctor. I um, mean, just based on his final lines at the end, Perry's like doctor and he's like yeah who else would it be he's like what you were expecting someone else and i mean just those lines in and of themselves aren't that bad i don't know what the not bad but i don't know what the word is but like you don't have to deliver those lines arrogantly or yeah. snarkily but he did so i mean i mean like to be fair to colin baker he was told that that was gonna yeah. be his character arc yeah so like <clears throat> He's not, like, entirely at fault for this, but... But at the same time, this is his first appearance, and it's just two... Well, as the Doctor. And it's just two lines at the end of a serial, so they could have just set him up as, you know, actually... Semi-likable guy just, just wait right till here. next week. Just wait till <sighs> next week. I'm not gonna spoil what he does. Well, not next week. The week after, because we're splitting the wet retrospective. But just yeah. wait. Just you wait. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, all right. Um, next week makes me really question why Perry stays with the Doctor. <laughs> so, next serial. All right, so... Um, yeah, so we're going to split the retrospective. Right. Um, uh, <clears throat> just, in, which is the yeah. second time we're, we're doing that. Um, no collaboration this time, though. Yeah. We didn't do any collaborations for the fifth Doctor, actually, now that I think about it. Well, we didn't do any for the first or the second or... We did. We did for the third. We did Lost the we Gallery for the third. into the third, and we did like three for the fourth. Yeah. So, um, so, we took a little bit of a break. So maybe we'll see yeah. the return of that for the Sixth Doctor. Maybe, um, hopefully, well, we'll do something in the coming months, not necessarily for the Sixth Doctor specifically. But yeah, well, I think the Sixth Doctor has the, is, I mean, unless you want to count the Eighth <clears throat> Doctor, has the least episodes of any of the classic Doctor Who Doctors. I think so, but also due to the nature of like how he gets written out, there's like a large gap of time for them to they, they've put like a ton of expanded universe stuff into, um, because they hadn't originally intended to write him out, and then they wrote him out by like having Sylvester McCoy in a wig for the first part of the, his first serial regenerate into the Seventh Doctor. Um, so that that gap between those serials like leaves a lot of room for expanded universe stuff. So yeah, well, I'm just saying like in terms of what we get on the yeah. TV show. No, I'm pretty sure you're you're right in that. Because you get two seasons in one serial, so. And all of next season is uh, 45 minute episodes. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, so I, I guess I'm curious to see how this is going to go. Uh, apparently, not a lot of people's... Well, apparently he's a favorite of people who listen to the audio dramas where they actually, like, complete the character arc that they intended to do on the show. But, like, for people who only watch the TV show, he's, like, pretty low on the list because, <laughs> you know, they don't complete that arc. <clears throat> but I guess we'll see. Yeah, so we should probably talk about this serial if we have anything more to say, which I do, briefly. But I um, just have a couple of, like, behind-the-scenes things that mm -hmm. I just want to make note of, so you can, well, you can go yeah, ahead and Well, yeah, I'll just first. say, well, I like this serial because... Um, they switched up the the objective a lot, which, you know, in a lot of serials, yeah. it just gets kind of stale where they're trying to do the Doctor and companions are, you know, they have one goal from episode one to episode four. And the, the villains have like one, well, the villains here had one goal, but they were sort of shifting allegiances and, and shifting, not motivations, but yeah, shifting goals, I guess. Mm-hmm. Sort of kept things interesting. We're like, okay, now the doctor has to go down and get the 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 bat milk, and then he's yeah. he's on the ship and he's hijacking it, and it was it's pretty cool how they did that. Well, I liked that it was different from previous regeneration stories because previously, like every regeneration story, is the doctor dies trying to save like the entire world, 
and, and, and he sort of fades into his regeneration, yeah. if you know what I mean. Not literally, yeah. but he <laughs> it, gets all like weak a, yeah. and yeah. But for this seal, it was like he dies because of because he's trying to save Perry. Like he's just trying to save one person. He's trying to get the hell off the planet, so to speak. And also, because he <laughs> fell into the Spectrox. I mean, yeah, but like, once he's done that, his primary goal becomes like saving Perry because he he feels at fault for getting you into this whole big situation. Whereas like every other regeneration story, the Doctor dies because he saves the world, but it like taxes him so much he dies. Or like he gets exposed to radiation and he dies. <clears throat> so yeah. well, this was one of my favorite regenerations. I don't know if I'd put this above Tom Baker's well, Tom Baker to Davison. Not not yeah no yeah yeah. Uh, the, well, yeah, I don't know which one I'd put higher. Yeah, but, but those, these are the best two, probably. Definitely, and I definitely I like Robert Holmes's writing. I think like his dialogue is kind of a lot snappier than we've had this just this season, like specifically. Um, yeah, yeah, I guess. <clears throat> I mean, Shiraz was pretty great, so and actually a cool villain in my opinion that's like the virtue of getting writers who are just experienced with the show and it, there's nothing bad with getting like new writers to work for the show because you have to develop the new talent at some point because you're not gonna be able to use yeah, the same writers exactly. forever um so it was nice to have like an old hat come back and write us a serial that ended up being like pretty good definitely i think up there for the fifth doctor i wouldn't say like overall it's like for the whole no, show i wouldn't it's, say it's it's one but I think best. for the for the fifth Doctor, at least, I think it it's probably in the top five. Outpaces the vast majority of his serials. Anyway, at least the, the, the recent serials he's gotten. <laughs> that's true. Um, anyway, just behind the scenes, apparently Davison uh, decided had a three year contract initially and decided not to renew it. So he, they knew he was going out at the end of the season, at the start of the season. But he said later he regretted that because um, he enjoyed the writing this season hmm. more. And I was like, in my head, I was like, well, I guess for this season, like, all the serials would be written more to Pete's Doctor than they would be for, like, Tom Baker. Um, so I guess he enjoyed that aspect of it. But anyway, he also said that, like, the directing of this serial specifically made him regret leaving because most of the other directors on the show like to give the directions from, like, the sound booth or whatever and, like, give directions down to the stage, the sound stage, and, like, tell the, the actors what to do from this the booth but apparently Graham Harper liked to be really hands on so he'd be behind the camera and he'd be like down on the set telling the actors what to do which is like what I had always assumed directing for this show had been like <laughs> because that's just like how it usually works um, but everybody has their own style and I guess Pete preferred the more hands on approach that Graham Harper took with his serial than the like laid back approach Pete. the other <clears throat> this is just what it is Pete which makes you think of the, the Disney <clears throat> Pete well, it's just easier to say than Davison or Peter. It's like, it's one syllable. <clears throat> but apparently he... he just call him Dave. Dave. <laughs> he kind of regretted leaving after that because he said if the directing had kept up like... Like if the writing and directing had kept up like this serial, he would have stayed for another year, but... Yeah, well, who knows if that would have happened. But <laughs> yeah, I think I would have liked more of the fifth Doctor. Yeah, I mean, also the fact that we watched like one a week feels like we kind of rushed through him well after the fourth it definitely feels yeah a bit rushed and that's um, the that's the good thing about books and audio dramas is that if we want more we we can get more right until we run out of those true but <laughs> peter is still making that might audio take a dramas. lifetime yeah. so peter's still making audio dramas and we've got like a bunch to get through already and like they're probably not gonna stop writing fifth doctor books yeah, like, the great thing about books is you don't need the actors to be alive to write stories about them, so... I mean, you don't need to do that for audios, either. You can just get someone to play them once they're gone. Well, you can do the first Doctor thing and have them, quote-unquote, go on vacation for a week for a serial. Um, yeah, but no, there are definitely ways around it, but... Yeah, that's that. Next week, we'll have the the actual retrospective where we talk about the fifth doctor and his companions and his serials and quotes and the usual nonsense we do for doctor retrospectives. Yeah. Um, anyway, email us at the doctor decorative vegetable.com questions, comments, concerns, arguments, love letters, thoughts on the fifth doctor. Uh, you can find us on iTunes, YouTube, and Google play. All at trust your doctor. Be sure to leave a rating. If you like the show, 
us on Facebook. Trust your doctor. Like us on Facebook. Also check us out on Twitter at TYD Podcast and follow us on Twitter. And next week, like we already mentioned, we're going to be doing a Fifth Doctor retrospective. But until then, the end. Thank you.